If I had a rupee for every time someone asked me which language is the best for DSA, I would have around 50 bucks right now. So almost everyone get this doubt in their head, which is the best language for DSA? So before starting DSA, people keep asking which language should they learn it in, which is the most optimized language for DSA, which is the most efficient language for DSA. And people choose all, ty all types of languages. Someone chooses C, someone chooses C++, someone chooses Java, Python, and someone even chooses Go. And I don't know why you do that. So in this video, I'm going to compare all of these languages, the majority of the chosen ones, and we're going to see which is the most optimized language. So this is a video ending the debate for the question, which is the best language for DSA. So hopefully after watching this video, you will not need to answer this question again. Now, I do need to put a disclaimer in the beginning only. These are my views. Your views might be different, but these views are also coupled with some facts like which language has what characteristics because I have done coding myself and I code in C++, I code in C, I code in Java, I code in Python and I code in JavaScript. So I know like the most popular languages at least. Did I miss Python? Yeah, I code in Python as well. Although I don't like Python at all. So I know majority of the languages. So I know like what are the upsides, what are the downsides of, you know, using a certain language. And all of these languages are very helpful. All of these languages are very helpful in their own domain, but we're talking strictly related to the world of data structures and algorithms. So let's start. So let's start with the most popular languages first. So two of the most mainstream languages are Java and C++. So C++ versus Java, which one is better in the perspective of DSA? So like I said, I've worked with both C++ and Java. And C++ I used all the time for problem solving and computer programming and Java I used for development and even in the current work I'm doing we're just using Java. So I have great experience with both of the languages and in college I did uh, data structures and algorithms using Java. So let's see. So both C++ and Java are very popular in computer programming and in DSA these are the two most popular languages but C++ is a tad bit more popular than Java. So C++ is preferred over Java in terms of computer programming, in terms of DSA. So thus it has more resources. So C++ has more resources than Java because a lot of people use C++. So the audience of C++ is more. So you'll get more resources in C++ while in Java you'll have less resources. But that doesn't mean that Java doesn't have any resource. Java also has great resources, but C++ has a tad bit more. Now coming to the complexity of both of these languages. So in its base syntax, I would say C++ is a bit easier than Java because C++ was one of the earliest language derived from C. The basic syntax is just like C and Java's basic syntax is a little bit more complex. Okay, C++ and C are structured programming languages while they have object orientation as well, while Java is purely object oriented. It doesn't have any structural programming in it. So C++ in its base syntax is more easier than Java, but while you're implementing advanced data structures like graphs, like trees, like, you know, linked list or anything which has sort of a connection between the nodes, then I would say Java makes it easier because Java doesn't have pointers and C++ has pointers and you need to use pointers in C++ to make that connection between the nodes. For example, if you have a linked list, then you'll have one node connected to the other, to the other, to the other, and this connection will be made using pointers. While in Java, you don't have pointers, you don't need pointers. You can just make an object of that class connected to other, connected to other, and it works like that. So while implementing data structures and algorithm, Java is a tad bit easier. Although both of, uh, both of them are like, you know, not that difficult to learn. Both of them are still easy, but Java is a relatively easier programming language. Now, the library. So you have Java collection, you have C++ STL. Some people love Java collection, some people love C++ STL. Which one is better? So to be honest, you cannot say that one is easier than the other, one is more efficient than the other. Both of them are, you know, pretty great at making things easier for you, making the code easier for you. But based on my own personal efficient, I would say that C++ STL trumps over Java collection. So C++ STL is better than Java collections because some of the algorithms, some of the like library algorithms in C++ STL have better time complexity than the standard algorithms that are used in Java. So if you have some sorting algorithm or if you have some inbuilt algorithm in a data structure and you use STL, then that will be faster than what you use in Java's collections. 
And collections is like a whole package where you have certain things, but in C++ STL, you can think of them as individual items, like you have vector set, they are individual tools, but in Java, all of them are more or less connected to one single thing. So C++ STL is more efficient, I would say, in my opinion, compared to Java, if you're using both STL would trump over Java's collection. One more thing I would like to add is that, I just remember this right now while I was making this video, is that second thread who's a competitive programmer who, who uses Java, who became a LGM also. So he made a video about Java versus C++ and he showed like two pages of code that were in Java and he showed that the same could be done with a few lines of code in C++. But I guess that depends on the person as well. Some people can be more efficient in Java, but some people can be more efficient in C++. But when you have a red computer programmer saying something, then I guess that opinion must have some value. So C++, you can make things easier with a fewer lines of code than if you do the same thing in Java. Now, coming to the speed. So if you have a problem and you're solving it with the same logic in Java, and if you have a problem and you're solving it with the same logic in C++, which one will be faster? Again, that is not up to the language. If you're using the same logic, then that depends on the number of lines you have, the number of statements you have, and how well your code is. That's independent of the language. If you're using the same methods, if you're using the same approach, then both of the code will have pretty similar time complexity. The change will be because of your coding habit. So in speed, both of them are pretty evened out. Both of them have great inbuilt algorithms. Both of them are, have great inbuilt functions, methods, which you can use to make your code faster. So speed is obviously entire. Speed is most probably independent of the language and is dependent on your coding skill at the problem level, at the solution level. So I guess that's pretty much it for C++ and Java. I compared them on, I think, four or five factors. You can check which one suits you, C++ and Java. I cannot say one is better than the other. But if you ask my personal opinion, I would definitely say C++ is better. Or just a slightly. It's like uh, just a little bit of difference is there. Both of them are on the same level. But C++ is definitely a little bit better according to me at the least. Now comes another fan favorite, Python. So I, to be very honest, I it might be controversial, but I really don't like Python, you know. Like if after learning C, C++, Java, when you go to Python, it feels like this, you know, you feel like there's a huge difference in the programming, in programming the way you know it once you start with Python, right? So I'm not really that fond of Python. I remember my friend used to code in Python in computer programming. So I also thought to, you know, join him in the same contest. And I used Python in just one single code shift contest. And that was the worst contest I ever had. So I would not go into specific factors about Python, but this is the thing. The main thing you need to consider is that a lot of people are not using Python. And there is a huge reason for that. Python is a great language if you go into machine learning, AI, and you go into like, you know, data science, data analytics. But if you use Python in problem solving, then you're going to get a ton of problems. First problem is with recursion. So whenever you like use Python in recursion, you might get some error. With simple problems, it's easy, but with problems where the input is large, it might throw, you know, some kind of memory error. I read a blog about it on Codeforces, some, like some coder was having issues in Python. And all he did was change the language in C++ and the same exact code was working. So I don't know if the language is the problem was dependent on Python or on him. But a lot of people commented on the same blog post that Python has a lot of problem while doing recursion. I think it was solved in the later versions, but yeah, Python is not really that optimized for problem solving. Python has some great libraries, like you have NumPy, you have Pandas, you have some great libraries to work with numbers and that might make solving easier problems, you know, easy for you. But Python is not really the best language. And Python, if you use the same code, if you use the same approach in C++ and Java and you use the same approach in Python, the result that you get might be different. You might be getting a wrong answer here with Python while you got a correct answer with C++ or Java. But I don't want to scare you if you're using Python, all the best to you. A lot of people use Python. A lot of people have gotten way ahead in life in using Python. But if you have yet to start, then I would not suggest Python. Like you should know Python. Python is a great language, learn it but it's not the best language to learn in problem solving. And it doesn't have a lot of resources as well because most of the people are using C++ and Java. So the resources in Python for DSA are extremely less compared to 
C++ and Java. So Python is uh, behind C++ and Java both, but it's a great language obviously in terms of the other fields. But in DSN problem solving, Python is not the best choice in going forward. Now coming to JavaScript. So JavaScript is a language of web development and almost every website out there uses JavaScript for you know its web page and the dynamic activities of the web page. So majority of the web developers or aspiring web developers think that they can just use JavaScript along with uh, in DSA and problem solving as well. Now there's nothing wrong in using JavaScript either. You can use JavaScript, but JavaScript does not have the same level of functionality, the same level of efficiency that C++ and Java have. So JavaScript is more or less on the same Python. Like there's nothing that I can say for JavaScript that I didn't already say for Python or vice versa. So JavaScript is there with Python. It's not better with, than Python. It's not bad than Python, but it is certainly not as good as compared to languages like Java and C++. So JavaScript and Python are a tier below. So if you have Java and C++ in the top tier, then you'll have JavaScript and Python below that. Now, as for other language, I don't really have much idea to be honest, but I would say that most of them fall in the same level as the tier of Python and JavaScript and some even below that because you have to understand most languages are not optimized for problem solving are not optimized for DSA. They're optimized or they are made for the work that they're made for like Python for machine learning, JavaScript uh, for web development. That is like the main thing that main purpose that they are for. You can actually use any programming language to solve any problem, right? There's no limitations on that. You can use Scratch, which is a kid's programming language to solve a lead code problem. You can use Ruby on Rails. You can use Golang. You can use pretty much any language to solve any problem. But what the difference is, how efficient will you be? How easy will it be for you? And how fast will you be and the, how fast the language will be in solving the problem? So these are the things that differentiate one language from the other. But that's not to say that one language cannot do the same thing another language can do. It's just that which one is more efficient and which one gives you less trouble. That's the main thing. So I've made that video on the perspective of that. Okay, not like this language cannot do this. This language can do this. That's not like that. Every language can do the thing that other language can. But this is the main thing to look out for which one is more efficient. So I guess that's pretty much it. I hope you learned something from this video. Still, if you're having any doubts, still, if you want to learn what is the best language for DSA, leave it in the comments. I'll be sure to answer as usual. And that's pretty much it. Until we see each other again in the next video. Thanks for watching.